here, Lincolnshire is the main cereal and rape and sugar beet growing areas of the country. And to come and put this rubbish in a dump in the middle of it seems absolute lunacy to me. It's like putting a loo in the middle of your larder. I feel that it's the will of the government being imposed on the will of the people because we all know that that method of containment of waste is not acceptable. I'm beginning to wonder now that they can let this happen to our little island. You know, we're so small, uh, wherever they dig holes or dump things. And they can sit there and discuss it in Parliament and say, oh yes, go ahead, as if it's just build some more toilets or something, you know. To us, it is our life, isn't it? And not my life, you think about generations to come. fate at Bullbeck in Lincolnshire, heralded by the junior jazz band's own brand of swing. For the first time ever here, the theme is militancy. This is Middle England, a green, pleasant and productive land that has nurtured some local families for ten generations. Until very recently, Bullbeck, a naturally law-abiding, conservative community, was a real-life ambridge, without the drama. The church has always been a focus for village life, and when in 1985 its bell ringers won the Lincoln Diocesan Plate, this was a major event. Last February, however, Bullbeck suddenly awoke to find itself famous, with the shock announcement that it was one of four possible sites for a new sort of nuclear dump. Future generations would have to live with concrete trenches full of nuclear waste. Since the news, village life has been concentrated on a single, alien issue. Three Mile Island, alias Anne Devonish, was one of the first villagers to hear the news. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I was nipped into Caythorpe in my car, next village, about two miles up the road. And um, I'd gone and got some groceries, and I had my car radio on, and I was just driving back, and it was the Jimmy Young show on, and he was talking... I don't know who he was talking to. He was talking to somebody on the telephone. I think he must have been from the House of Commons or something. And... Um, he said that these sites were being announced in Parliament, I think it was three o'clock or something in the afternoon, so Jimmy Young says, how about now? You know, on Radio 2. So um, he said, OK, and, and he said, fall back, you know, and I, I couldn't believe it. I, did, I felt like stopping the car, do I get out? You know, I think if I'd have seen a space rocket or a Martian, I don't think I'd have been any more, you know, so shocked. Anne Devonish moved from Nottingham 20 years ago to bring up her four children in the tranquility of Fulbeck. She makes the most of village life, from arranging flowers at the church to pulling pints at the pub. She was proud to send a son off to fight in the Falklands, but she's been shaken by seeing her peaceful backwater become a battleground over a dump. I just hope it doesn't come. You know, I really do. I can't see the sense in people saying, well, it'll create jobs, we've lost a school, we've only a shared vicar now. We've only one shop, and that's a post office. You know, the village is dying. It might bring a bit of life back into the village, but, you know, they could think of another way to do it. I mean, I'd sooner a coal mine go down there. I know people wouldn't agree with me there. You know, but I think it'd be a lot less dangerous than a, 
a nuclear dump. I mean, the actual fact a dump, that's about, you know, sums it up, doesn't it? That's what they call it, a dump. The site of the proposed dump is an old World War II airfield owned by the Ministry of Defence and now largely converted to farmland. The government's plan is to find which of the four locations is the most suitable for shallow burial of the nation's low-level waste. 13,000 tonnes of waste a year will be brought to the chosen site by train and lorry from all over Britain for the next 50 years. The waste itself will remain radioactive for 300 years. The day after the surprise announcement, NAREX, the government's nuclear waste executive, holds a press conference in the village pub. But the villagers themselves are excluded. Still dazed to find their home in the national spotlight, they hang around outside in the snow, hoping for scraps of information about what's planned. The site is not in the middle of the village. It's um, out in a quite lowly populated area, but there will be people there who will find this a surprise and want to know about it. And the thing I would suggest to them is that they take the opportunity of coming to meetings we will be holding, get our literature, um, and try to understand this, because the operation will be for primary low-level waste, material that people have had on their bodies, clothes and gloves. And so whenever that is put into drums and put on the ground, there will be very, very little risk associated with it. Absolutely outraged and stunned. Yes. And we're why, just not going to accept it. Why do you not want it here? People here have been saying today from Nirex that it's secondary nuclear waste, that it's not going to be terribly damaging. Well, of course they would, but it's not on their doorstep, is it? It's on our doorsteps. We're the people who live here. We're the house owners and the people who live, live nearby. We've got young children. We, we just don't want it and we're not going to accept it. No, and I, I think the most worrying I thing is that people just don't understand what's going to happen. We've never been consulted. No. It's just been landed on our yeah. doorstep and we don't know anything about it. I'm not in any way criticising people for being concerned. They don't understand these matters. And um, they, there are things they know about that I don't understand. But for this particular one, we will make sure that we give every opportunity to them to come and we will make presentations and we will ask independent people to make presentations to ensure that they understand it and then it's up to them to make their judgments. Judgments came thick and fast, even from children. Stephen Harris is the son of a farm worker. Dear Nirex, I wish you would stop going on about the dumping of nuclear waste at Bullbeck. Like myself, I live about three miles from the proposed nuclear dump site. Fullback used to be a nice village, but now it is becoming a village with for sale signs everywhere and people are putting posters up and some say Fullback says no to nuclear waste or no heart, no soul. I think you should find a new way of getting rid of it and keeping it where it is made. The adults of Fullback decide to take positive action against all their natural instincts. Although only a few months ago, most villagers regarded protest as almost a dirty word, something to be puzzled and tut-tutted over in the papers and on the news, they now formed their own action group, LAND, Lincolnshire Against Nuclear Dumping. Social barriers are pushed aside as a new sort of home guard is mobilized complete with the more genteel forms of political statement, as well as calls for what they see as vital further research. Elected leader of land is Julian Fain, gentleman farmer. The family came here in Jacobean times and have owned the land, not the whole parish, but most of the land since then. Using the old-fashioned word of squire, which possibly isn't used a great deal, I mean, I, I am, I suppose, the squire of Fulbeck because I've always been known this, and I've, I've been born with this fact that family have lived here for 300 plus years. You can't really put yourself entirely in somebody else's shoes. Um, but I'm certain that, yes, one can't avoid having a very deep feeling, not just for the land, but the community, and that the, the whole area and, and the way of life which we feel, when I say we, that everyone in, in this area, I think, feels, is, is something to be treasured as, as good quality compared to some of the urban ways of life and uh, other, other areas. Uh, we, we feel we have standards that other areas don't necessarily have. The standards are based on Christianity, simple as that. Family life, 
working hard, the simple things that the majority of people think are right. Perhaps this is a difference, in a way, between owning an urban factory or owning land. But I would say the owner of land sees himself as a trustee for life, to use a legal term. You own it for so many seasons, probably 40 or 50 years is the maximum time, and that's a very short speck of history, so that brings you down to earth a bit, that you aren't that important. Can you complete the job, okay? Yeah. yeah. And I'll see you later on down yeah. at the other farm. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. See you later. Yeah. 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 Bye. I think probably being a trustee for life is a better term than being a landowner. Julian Fane's approach is quite different from that of Nairex. They wish to come here for 50 years, uh, dump their waste, monitor it for 300 years, um, and then go away and say everything will be all right. Um, possibly one has some... Uh, argument with them, having been here for 300 years already, I have a deep feeling for the land, and I hope that my family uh, might well be here when Narex have gone, if they ever come. Julian Fane, former High Sheriff of Lincolnshire, can see no reason to abandon the British gentleman's age-old proven strategy of reasoned persuasion and string-pulling on the old boy network. Julian, how are you? Very well. Now he's invited his friend and local Tory MP, Douglas Hogg, to council land on tactics. Um, I don't by any means exclude the possibility of a change of policy as far as the government and the nuclear industry is concerned, but I do not think that there is any possibility of a change of policy until the end of this year and into next year. I think in the meantime the following things are useful. First, I think, is to try and get at the nuclear industry. Now, I've been seeing a lot of John Baker. I'm going to start seeing members of the um, BFNL board. Now, the reason for this is that I think that we've got to try and persuade them that the nuclear industry is at its most vulnerable stage ever. There seem to be two approaches to defeat them on a logical approach or the approach of blocking roads and throwing eggs and worse things about it. And that has never achieved anything, as we've seen throughout other arguments, coal strikes and things. So I feel that logical argument is the way to defeat them. And I think that is a, a sensible thing to do. The next sensible thing to do, I think, is to try and identify what really is the alternative to near-surface disposal facilities. But not everyone shares Julian Fane's belief in reasonable cooperation. A farmer from the neighbouring village of Brant Bruton, Ken Wade, for one. Can I first of all open by saying um, that we are the only other country in the world, with the exception of France, which intends to dispose of nuclear waste by this method. I came here 15 years ago um, onto a small county council farm. We were growing about 30 acres of potatoes, and we were growing onions, Dutch white cabbage, sugar beet, and wheat. Um, and I feel that maybe the day what there's even the smallest leak from the site and there's an increase in the radioactive in the water supply or what have we, irrespective of whether that's at a very low level, the whole of the produce of the area is going to be affected. I mean, that doesn't mean, I, I may hasten to add, that I'm against the dumping of waste. I realise, being a practical, responsible person, that there has got to be a proper method to dispose of nuclear waste. But any government which is proposing um, shallow disposal of nuclear waste, which can get into the waterways and what have we, is being totally and absolutely irresponsible. Ken Wade and his fellow villagers are so exasperated by NAREX, they do what all dissatisfied committee members do, form their own activist offshoot. They want direct action. I don't agree with the attitude which is now being presented that we should cooperate with Nirex. As far as what I'm concerned, Nirex is the common enemy, and it's as simple as that. I mean, I, I don't see any reason whatsoever to, uh, to attempt to, uh, to cooperate with, with Nirex, on the site nor off the site. They should be opposed absolutely all the time. One of Brant Bruton's first acts of attrition is to organise a demonstration on the main road to the coast on the bank holiday weekend. We just, right, we're just going to go. It's on the end of there, why? Oh, sorry, sorry. No. Put it on the wire. <laughs> a phalanx of tractors will turn out to block the traffic. 
We'll wait for a minute. Yeah. We'll wait. Chief organizer is Lionel Dunning, international show jumper and local farmer. Basically, yeah. around the roundabout. Oh, I've got three different. Come back onto the A17. Yeah. In our group at the moment, we are making sure that everything is kept peaceful. Our demonstrations are peaceful. They're done with cooperation of the police, and we try to make it so that we don't cause anybody inconvenience, but to try to put over our point to the country as a whole. Whether it's here or whether it's any site that they've chosen, it's the wrong way to dump the damn stuff. I think this is the only way we can do it. How else can we do it? Julian Fain from Land says, let's negotiate with Narax. Well, how the hell can you negotiate with the enemy? It's like back in the war. Hey, could you ring up dear Hitler and say, dears, please, sir, we don't need to drop any bombs. No way. There's only one way we can fight, is we can fight peacefully this way. OK, everybody, we're all going to line up now. We're going to line up towards the main road, everybody. OK, let's go. The whole people in the game have got to be made to realise that if this water course gets contaminated, the whole country is snarled up. Not just a little area, the whole country. Because 25% of the vegetables that go into Covent Garden every morning come from Lincolnshire. And you can more or less say a high percentage of them are all irrigated out of this one river that flows through here. What they're going to try and put a dump underneath them. They very, very so stupid. But all is not frustration and fracas around Fulbeck. It's in the nature of the place that life should go on as normally as possible. Curlews can still nest on the airfield, a haven for wildlife. The village cricket team keeps a stiff upper lip and a straight bat. They've been playing the game for more than a century after all, drawing on most of the Fulbeck families, including the Fanes. They're used to victory and two years ago reached the semi-final of the Whitbread Cup. In a suitably mellow corner of the village, the rectory ladies continue to meet every other Tuesday. The older women of Fulbeck knit together for charity. Is that through? Yes. I come across as you said. No, no. The younger hit me again. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> the fanes of Fulbeck. By now, Julian feels as though he's being put through hoops. He's been trying to move the debate out of the heat of the political arena and into the cooler climes of scientific reasoning. But he's worried Nyrex is keeping the facts to itself. The whole thing is a complete experiment. And until we have firm criteria and details against which to measure the geology and the water flow and the drainage of the site, we feel that they're unreasonable. We've asked them this in writing, we've asked them publicly. Myself, and members of land and the scientific committee in particular have written many, many letters asking a whole lot of questions. Narex eventually reply, but it usually takes a great deal of time. And at the end of the day, the, the answer is like some political sort of answers, very vague and not answering the point. As Mr. Kenneth Baker, when he was Minister of the Environment, said in the House of Commons, all things nuclear must be open, and they are not totally open. 
Julian Fane hasn't enjoyed attacking government policy from the land HQ on his estate. Disillusionment is now setting in. Hello, it's Mr. Fane. Could I speak to Roy Chapman, the nuclear officer, please? I've changed my views about politicians. Perhaps one thought the world was all nice and people played Hello, cricket. I think sometimes they behave reasonably, sometimes one has been amazingly shocked by their lack of understanding. I mean, the great thing is, to any politician, that they want our vote in the next election. And somehow one wonders whether they really do want it sometimes, because they don't seem to warm to the way we think at all. Which strikes me as a strange order of priorities. NAREX has set its public relations machine in motion with senior information officer Susan Gittins at the wheel, fielding as nuclear expert Dr Ian Blair. They're both seconded to NAREX from the Atomic Energy Authority, next door in Harwell. Their task is to win over the hearts and minds of the villagers. Today, they're explaining the relative harmlessness of low-level radiation. What happens now to these little packets of radiation if they were to strike you or me, as these, in fact, are doing right now. Uh, if it's uh, human tissue, for example, that energy dissipates in the tissue. There is, however, a possibility that uh, the radiation will, through a process known as ionization, uh, cause uh, damage to the cells in your body. That, however, is not the end of the story. And the reason for that is that the cell repair mechanism isn't actually perfect. Occasionally, the mechanism makes mistakes. It puts the wrong cell in, or it puts a cell upside down, or back to front, or something. See, the more I learn about it, the more frightened I am. I think why people are more frightened of nuclear. Well, radiation is because you can't see it. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it, you can't touch it. You don't know it's there, do you? You wouldn't know if you was contaminated. You probably wouldn't know for 20 years. You wouldn't probably show at all. I mean, with measles, you get spots. You know, if you get mumps, you get swollen glands and so you know something's wrong don't you but apparently you can go 20 years and it's sort of eating away inside you and you don't know even in the pub there's not much chance to get away from talk of radioactivity especially after chernobyl these lambs in um, Wales have been contaminated, aren't they, from Russia? Why haven't they mostly before today or yesterday? Well, because they're misleading us again, and they're hiding the facts. According to the Times the other day, um, what's been landing there is cesium-137, which has a biological half-life of only a few days, but its radioactive half-life is over 30 years. So it's for 300 years on the grasslands of Cumbria and Wales and so on. The Reverend Hugh Middleton was born in Lincolnshire and trained as a metallurgist in the steel industry. He's become a much respected fullback figure since moving here four years ago. His total flock numbers 2,000 from Fulbeck and the two neighbouring parishes in his charge. A father of three himself, the rector is particularly worried about the future of the children of Fulbeck in a nuclear world. But what he's seen happening to his adult parishioners concerns him just as much. We've got in our area the crisis of faith, the belief that many people have held that they will look after us is being tested. They have been politicians who will always put people first and will not do anything to hurt people or the environment. And they, the scientists, are also under question. And this is particularly true now that we have NIREX and their scientists in the area. And that's quite worrying um, when you live in an, in an area which has always had this inherent trust and faith in them. And when you now hear of people who have had that trust say quite openly that this is like living in a communist state, you begin to get quite worried.
I think that there is a danger, a real danger, that some people in this area may be forced to do things which are uncharacteristic of people who live here. I think people are getting fed up with the way in which they've been treated. They haven't been given the decent courtesy that they show to one another. Um, they have found that people haven't necessarily been truthful. They have found that the democratic process doesn't seem to be working for them or in their interests. And now there is a quiet revolution in terms of trying to protest against what Nairis are proposing to do. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he asked for bread, or hand him a snake instead of a fish, or hand him a scorpion if he asked for an egg? If you then, who are evil, know how to give your children what is good, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here ends the lesson. At 8 p.m. on May the 21st, a month after Chernobyl, the bells of all the local churches toll in unison. Hundreds of villagers gather on the airfield. Tonight, a special development order is to be voted on in the House of Commons. If passed, it will enable Nairex to carry out exploratory drilling at all four sites. The government plan a three-line whip, so there's little doubt the order will go through. We're having a two-minute silence. We're having a two-minute silence to remember the people who died in Russia and to give our protest to the government at any suggestion that they should bury nuclear waste at Fulbeck. Two-minute silence, please. As the silence ends, 12 bonfires are lit, one for each local parish affected. Many in Fulbeck are finding their lifelong political allegiance sorely tried. Julian Fain once hoped to stand as Tory candidate for Grantham. Well, we've accepted for a long time, although several Conservative MPs, including our own, will vote against the order tonight, that with a majority of 120, there's no way we can defeat it. Up to now, we've seen peaceable demonstrations, but I understand there's a more militant movement in this area who are considering taking much more, not violent action, but much more positive action, if you like. What are your views on that? Well, I'm quite sure you're right in what you say. Um, I personally would not and I don't think land would agree breaking the law, but people are very angry, and unless the government seem to be more reasonable and being able to talk to us, I don't blame them for being angry. And I personally cannot be held responsible for people from this area. Three weeks later, in Grantham, Narex holds another press conference about the drilling it is now legally allowed to carry out on the airfield. Again, the villagers are not invited. Julian Fane and Conservative councillor Susan Fern find themselves at the brink of good manners. Don't forget. Day two, you wouldn't allow Fulbeck into, the, into your press conference. You ignored the local people who take these gentlemen from the press. You're coming to our village and our county, and all, all, with all due respect to all these nice press people, and they're very pleasant. I mean, it is our village, and yet again you ignore us, and this is the great government machine. No, we're not ignoring you at all. 
we, we are simply covering the investigation reports that we've, that we've sent out. There's going to be nothing new. Can I say, not only are you ignoring land, you're ignoring the county council and the district council. When land speaks, we're talking with 56,000 people behind us. You're totally ignoring us. You haven't even had the courtesy to inform us of this press conference. We've no idea what's happening today, what you're actually discussing. I, I talked to your um, the press council officer. The are not aware of this press conference today. I have no knowledge of it. No, we, we are in contact with the district council over meetings and what will happen on site. So, yes, um, you're welcome to sit in and take a seat. Thank you very much. Is everyone settled? All right. Thank you for um, coming all today, both the invited members of the press and other members of the public. The purpose and other members of the public, I said, the purpose of this meeting is to introduce Sir Alexander Gibbon Partners, who are the company who've been appointed by NAREX to be responsible for the field investigations on the site near Fulbeck. The timing on the field investigations is that they are due to start sometime after 7th of July. However, I should say that at present it is not our intention to give any further warning of the timing other than to say it is after the 7th of July. One of the important things on the day is to get as many people as possible on the site. Yeah. Right. Now we can talk about communications. In a Brant Bruton drawing room, the activists plan their lines of defense for the day of the Narex invasion, whenever it might be. We've got a telephone tree, right, which we haven't tested yet. No. Now we ought, first of all, be putting plans in hand to test that telephone tree to make sure that lines of communication work. And I suggest that we lay that down tonight. We say, we say here and now that, uh, say, tomorrow night, somebody's going to set that telephone tree going. Let's, let's, have, a let's, yeah. have, a, let's have a dummy run. Yeah. Mm. Let's have a dummy run. Yeah. Let's have a dummy run. We've many got others. to get see, we radio linking and radio trains to broadcast on the day we know they're coming. Emerge a news flash. Get mm. everybody down there. Drop whatever they're doing and get them going. Yeah. And... I think that is the protest that would hit the country. August the 18th. Now everyone knows this is the day Narex will try to get on site. Land has decided that Brant Bruton's defiant approach is the only possible one. For three weeks, the villagers have united to mount a 24-hour guard. Okay, what's the situation on the... We've Natalie? got a car, we've got two cars in um, important places because it's narrow there, you see, so we don't need as many. And it's that bit further down, so people aren't so willing to just go down there. Plus, we've got, obviously, it, it blocked and padlocked as well. Good. Have you got anybody up our end? That's right. On Green Lane. We're, yes. Okay, we've got yeah, well, we've got the patrols. Yeah, we've got the radios the out time. there as well. Final adjustments are made to the blockade of the main gate. From six in the morning, posses of police arrive both civilian and military. The villagers want to keep on the right side of the law, but feel that blocking the gate with a human chain is their last chance to protest. Have people on this side of the road, please. <laughs> I think it's about the only thing you can do at this, uh, this time. Um, it's very ironic today that um, NAREX have chosen this day of all days to come to this site. Um, four to six years ago, the Battle of Britain uh, was fought for such good ideals as freedom, democracy, and truth. And four years later, in September of 1944, um, men flew from this airfield here to Arnhem, to the Battle of Arnhem, to fight for those same ideals. It's rather sad that today people have to come and demonstrate for the ideals of freedom, democracy, and truth. At 11 o'clock, the contractor's convoy is sighted on the access road to the airfield. The will of the government is about to be measured against the will of the villagers. Everyone's there, ready for the confrontation, except Julian Fane. As a justice of the peace, I felt that I could possibly, through no fault of my own, get involved in breaking the law accidentally, and I didn't want to be involved in this. Um, that doesn't mean to say I'm not 100% behind direct action and keeping Narex off-site. Everybody, hold hands. Oh dear, they've arrived. Hold hands, please. 
asking you to like leave to the site. We don't want you here. Yes. Under any circumstances, yeah. we'd like you to leave now. We're not going to allow you on the air. Yeah. Could, could I mention that permission to carry out the drilling of this site has been granted by Parliament under the Special Development Order. We, we are by the local people, people doesn't. Working. And that... That was without representation. We have the vast majority of independent scientific opinion yeah. on our side yeah. that yeah. says that many, many more years research into the UK yeah, geology no needs to be done before you can even start picking potential sites. And we ask you to go away. We shall not go away until you give up here. Thank you. You can see Thank how you. many people are here today and how strongly people feel about this. So we I'd ask you just to leave, please. Fill out the gate. Shall we put back in the gate? Everybody back right in. Sure. Sure. Radio Lincolnshire, this is live. Can you tell us, please, are you coming back today? Yes, we are coming back at 3 o'clock. The vehicles are going to have to go, I'm afraid. The triumph of the people of Fulbeck was to be short-lived. After six more unsuccessful attempts to enter the airfield, Nyrex took out an injunction against land and 26 named protesters, including Julian Fane, Anne Devonish, Ken Wade, and even the rector and his wife, thereby making any further obstruction illegal. On September the 23rd, the drillers gained access. Hundreds of police, some with riot gear, were bussed in from all over Lincolnshire to protect the contractors from what a Times leader described as a bunch of middle-class, middle-aged hooligans. We're so upset yeah. about it. Yeah. It, it. It's unbelievable. It's happening in fullback. I think it's so totally wrong what they're doing. They, you know, it should never have happened. What right have they to do this to us? Nyrex will be test drilling at Fulbeck for eight months. It will be 18 months before the chosen site is announced. <laughs> 